In this video, I'm going to share three really useful and powerful things that you can do with automation in GarageBand for Mac. Let's dive in. All right, first off, volume automation. There are a couple of really straightforward things you can do with volume automation, both using GarageBand's master track and on individual tracks. All right, one really easy and straightforward thing you can do is to have GarageBand automate a fade out for you at the end of your track. It's really simple. Just head up to the toolbar at the top of your screen, hit mix, and then select create volume fade out on main output. You'll see that GarageBand will automatically open the master track for you and open the automation view for you as well. You can open the automation view at any point by hitting the A key on your typing keyboard. At the end here, you can see that this automation curve has four points on it and is gradually decreasing. And you can hear what that sounds like here. does exactly what it says on the tin, creates a great sounding automatic fade out for you at the end of your track. You can also do this at the start of your track as an automated fade in with a little bit more work on your part. If I just copy all four of these automation points using Command and C on my typing keyboard once I've selected, hit enter and move the playhead back to the start of the project, and then hit Command and V, you'll see that it's been pasted into the master tracks automation curves. From there, it's just a case of manually moving these automation points to mirror the fade out at the end. And then when I hit play, you can hear a automated fade in. You can use volume automation at a track level as well. Here on this track called Hidden Message, you can see I have some volume automation in place here already. If I take it away, you can hear what it sounds like without the automation applied. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, but I want it to be a bit more subtle and come in a bit more gradually. I'll add that automation back in and then hit play again. Yeah, I think that sounds much better with a gradual fade-in than it did coming in all of a sudden. Unlike GarageBand for iOS, in GarageBand for Mac, you can automate pretty much any part, feature, or effect of a track, including the pan knob. If you want to change what you're automating from volume to any other aspect of your track, hit A on your typing keyboard again to open the automation view, and you'll see in each track header, there is a drop down menu. If you click on that menu, you'll get a drop down list, and there you can see all of the things that you can automate on this track. There is quite a lot to choose from here. I'll be automating panning here, so I'll just select pan and you can see that I have some panning automation in place here already. But to give you an idea of what this will do, I've removed that automation from one region. And if we listen back to what that sounds like with no panning automation applied. It's quite a nice little pad sound there. 
So what I want is for this sound to automatically move from one speaker or headphone to the other as the track plays. To do that, I just need to grab this automation point and move it down to the bottom here. I can get rid of this one, and then this middle one if I move it up to the top, and then this third automation point moved down to the bottom. And here's what that sounds like. Really, really simple and easy to do, but very powerful and a great way to add some dynamics to your songs and projects. Before we go any further, if you're finding this video useful and or helpful, then go ahead and give that like button a little bit of a tap. I really appreciate it and it really helps me out. Cheers. As I mentioned earlier, you can automate pretty much anything on a track in GarageBand for Mac, including effect parameters. Sticking with this project, I'll show you how to automate a slowly, gradually increasing filter effect to the start of a project. First off, we're going to need the master track again, so if you head up to track in the toolbar at the top, and hit Show Master Track. And then open the Smart Controls menu with the Master Track selected, and you'll see the Plugins menu on the left. I have this Auto Filter plugin all ready to go. If you want to use this same plugin, it's in GarageBand's batch of stock plugins under Filter. So I'll hit A on my typing keyboard once again to open the automation view, and on the Master Track, track header, I've got that same drop down menu that does look slightly different this time. If I click on it and select output, I can select auto filter from the menu. I have the option to automate several different controls within the auto filter plugin. I'm going to select cutoff. And you can see it has changed the readout on the drop down menu from volume to auto filter cutoff. So if I play that back, you can hear what that sounds like. Not a lot happening as the cutoff is currently set to zero. So if I come back and click to add an automation point at the start of the project, and then another automation point in line with the end of the eighth bar, that's where everything starts happening in the song, and bring that second point up to the very top where the filter cutoff hits 100, here's what that sounds like. I may want to fiddle with that a little bit as it was perhaps a bit quiet for a bit too long, so I might want to move the first point up to maybe 25% instead of starting at zero. But yeah, that's how you can automate a rising filter effect at the start of your project and how you can automate any effect using GarageBand's automation. All right, that's three really useful ways that you can use automation in GarageBand for Mac. If you want to dive into even more advanced GarageBand for Mac tutorials, then click right here. Take care of yourself. See you next time. Bye for now.